Interest rates may go up further. If you're considering buying a rental property in 2023, here are some of the risks you need to understand. If you're new to my channel, my name is Koken and I'm a real estate investor and I run a real estate team here in the Niagara region. If you're interested in learning more about what we do, check out our beginner's guide to investing in the Niagara region in the comments below. All right, so let's get into it. So first off, as of um, January, the Bank of Canada has uh, given a smaller than uh, usual rate hike of 0.25%. And this, along with a signal that they are going to pause rate hikes in the near term to see the impact um, that the previous rate hikes, along with this smaller one, are making in the economy, specifically around inflation. They want to see that inflation is slowing down. If it's not, they're going to increase rates further. If it is, they may pause. And if it drastically reduces along with the economy slowing down sufficiently, they may actually cut rates. So it's uncertain how it's going to go in the future. But for now, they have paused. All right. Here are some of the risks that still exist when it comes to considering how interest rates are going to be in 2023 uh, and moving into the future. The first is the reason we are experiencing a lot of the inflation was this invasion of Ukraine. It was the trigger that started um, this huge increase in energy prices. And it was, you know, helped with the fact that we had a whole bunch of monetary stimulus since COVID started. So those things together um, in hindsight, is the cause of inflation. I wish I had known this before it had started, obviously, but um, in hindsight, this is what we've seen. But this has not been concluded. The war is still going on, as you can see, even these recent news articles. It's been a year now, and it's it's still going on, and there's no clear winner or loser in sight. The second thing to keep in mind, China, which is one of the world's largest economies, has been in lockdown until just very recently, they had one of the strictest lockdown rules, travel restrictions, um, and that has really slowed down their economy, but it has also dampened their effect on global inflation. They are one of the largest energy consumers and importers, right? They don't produce a lot of energy, but they use a lot of energy. They have, as of January, um, stopped their lockdowns, reopen their borders. So we are now going to see the impact that they have on the global energy market, because if they start becoming a huge buyer of energy, and if the supply of energy does not increase sufficiently, we may see prices go up again, uh, similar to what we experienced when the war just started. And that could cause inflation to heat up again, because energy prices ripple into, you know, food, groceries, all the other areas that um, consist of uh, the cost of living. So um, as you can see by this news article, travelers flock to cross border as at last the curbs are lifted. Um, and this article also talks about how it's not all smiles, but especially when it comes to some key indicators like manufacturing, um, they are pretty much coming back to their near peak levels from uh, prior to COVID. So a lot of their economies reopening up. I couldn't find the article here, but there was also another article that talked about revenge spending is starting in um, China, which is something we've experienced here in Canada and in the US um, much <laughs> earlier than this. When things opened up, we saw car prices skyrocket. We saw flight tickets go up, right? Because people were just out there spending money. That hasn't happened in China yet, and they're going to start now. So seeing how that impacts global inflation, which also will eventually impact Canadian inflation, will be something to keep in mind. So all of this to say there are risks. Uh, the, the one thing I didn't mention is that uh, the Bank of Canada is also stating that the supply chain issues which have contributed to inflation um, the, because of the disruptions are starting to ease. And with China reopening up, their impact on the disruptions may also reduce, meaning that if you, you know, a company places an order for you know, a certain product or materials, it can be produced and sent in a timely manner. So therefore, uh, competition will then 
potentially start bringing prices down to normal at least. So that may be a dampening factor. The reopening may be a factor that increases inflation. So all of these are happening at the same time. Here's the reality. As an investor, let me just put the screen back here. As an investor, it's never going to be all roses and shine, sunshine when it's the best time to invest, whether it's in the stock market, whether it's in real estate. Let me share with you a a screenshot that I have here. So this is the S&P 500, which is one of the you know more popular indexes for stocks in the US. So this tracks sort of how stocks perform um, and it's a good benchmark of where the overall market is at. And I want to specifically go back to the 2008 financial crisis. In the 2008 financial crisis, you can see here the market peaked just under 1600 and then it dropped under $800 uh, for this index. So there was over a 50% decline. The reason for this decline at the bottom, you must be wondering like, why didn't people see that this was probably the best time to buy in hindsight? Because the market recovered, so it doubled by 2012 and then it went on a tear up to more recently, up to 2022. At the bottom of the market, people were worried we were going to go into another Great Depression and the Great Depression saw the stock market drop 80%. So even in this case, the market had dropped 50%. There was a fear that it could go down another 30%. That's why people were selling stocks at the bottom and it was causing that very depressed price to exist. You know, the Federal Reserve came in, they provided all the stimulus that they bailed out the banks. That risk of going into the depression got eliminated and then the stock market rebounded up pretty much back at the peak in 2012. Now, in 2012, the economy was still suffering. I think they were in a recession or just getting out of a recession. Things were not good in the economy, but the future outlook was very bright. People were expecting the economy to continue to improve and they weren't worried about going back to a depression or a financial crisis that ha had passed. So they weren't worried about that. So if you think about it, the best time to buy an investment would have been in 2008 when the fears were at the peak. There were very real concerns. And in 2012, even though things hadn't recovered, because sentiment had recovered, people were no longer worried about that fear. Prices had already adjusted back to where um, it was expecting, you know, perfect future outlooks ahead. Let's take a look at the real estate market as well. So this is the Niagara region average sale price data. You can see it from 2020 up to February of 2022, prices went on a tear, pretty much doubling. And in February of 2022, it peaked at 805,000 and it declined all the way up to now, which is January is the last data we have. You can see here that it declined from 805,000 to 570,000. That's about a 30% increase as of December. And as of January, we are seeing a little bit of positive data that the prices are coming up um, slightly here. And the on the streets outlook where with our real estate team, we are seeing that we're putting in offers on properties under asking and we're getting beat in competition a couple of times where someone else is offering closer to asking or simply the asking price and they're getting it instead of us going in below the asking price. So we are starting to see more activity, more homes selling, and we're not seeing some of the prices as deeply discounted as we saw in November and December. How this plays out in the future, you know, no one knows, right? If one of these risks materialize, prices could go down further, or if the Bank of Canada pauses rates, our economy sort of flatlines and maybe goes into a small, a, a little recession where it drastically drops inflation, but you know we don't see a crisis of any kind. Then the Bank of Canada may drop interest rates to stimulate the economy because they're, the fear of inflation has passed. If interest rates drop, you can expect real estate prices to just go through the roof because based on the prices we're seeing now at a lower interest rate, at least from an investor standpoint, the cash flow would be ridiculous. Right now, it's still very tight. There's not an abundance of opportunities where there's a lot of cash flow, but um, we are looking and we are sort of sifting through all the properties to, to find the best options. All right. So if you are, oh. so if you are looking to invest in real estate, 
there is never going to be a perfect time to buy when it comes to the outlook being all rosy and positive and prices being low. If you want a great deal when prices are low, you have to take the risks that come with it. And the risks right now are real. So you have to make a decision. Is this the right time to buy for you? Can you stomach those risks? If they do materialize, interest rates go up, prices decline further. Can you stomach that? Can you be a long term investor? be disciplined in your approach to purchasing properties that have positive cash flow and have the ability to hold on to it both financially and psychologically if things get worse and just keep it for 10 years plus if you have the ability to do that i think you know the spring market is going to be a great time to pick up a rental property and hold on to it for the long term and you know what there's nothing wrong with waiting this out if you feel the risks are just too much for you right now there's too much uncertainty and you want to wait and see how it happens that is a perfectly fine approach there's nothing wrong with that just keep in mind you may not see the prices we're seeing now when the outlook is more positive and certain there may be a increase in price once that certainty comes back so just something to keep in mind it doesn't mean you have to rush out and go buy something but if you are willing to buy something right now, you have the advantage of this uncertainty, but it comes with risk. So something to keep in mind. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the comment down below. Until next time, all the best.